so we're going to get you up and running with Retro Arch and PS2 today. Someone's asked me to do this in my community, and I'm happy to do this for you. But just let me ask you if you can hit notifications if you like this video before I start. It helps my channel out really greatly. So let's get into this. So first of all, we're going to obviously need to extract a PS2 game. And what this requires is either an ISO image or .bin and .q files of your PS2 game. We're also going to need some BIOS files to get this running. And I'm going to leave the link in my description. What we need to do first is download the portable version of PCSX2. And of course, PCSX2 is the best emulator you're going to get for PS2. So if we just go to where it says latest stable, instead of going for install, I'm going to download the portable version of this so let's just open up this file and i'm going to just drag this onto my desktop so once we've got the portable version of pcsx2 we can close down the web browser now i'm going to just go inside this folder and open up pcsx2 and i'm going to just go through the basic configuration process so i'm going to just go to press next and i'm going to press next again on this part and your final part of this configuration process is going to be pointing it to where your BIOS files are located. So if I just uncheck this just here and I go to browse, I'm going to point this to where my BIOS files are located. So as you can see, I've got a BIOS folder on my desktop. So I'm going to go to desktop. And I'm going to just left click once on the BIOS file and press this one here and then go to finish. So once this is up and running, what we now need to do is close this one down. And as we can see from the folder just here, it's now created a few extras. So what we're going to do is just leave this folder open. And what I'm going to do is open up RetroArch directory. So right click on the RetroArch shortcut, open file location. And if I just scroll up in the RetroArch directory, I'm going to come across system. Now inside system, I'm going to create a new folder. So if I right click here and go to new folder, I'm going to just create this new folder. I'm going to title it PCSX2. So what I'm going to do now with PCSX2 itself, I'm going to just highlight everything here and just drag all of this inside of the PCSX2 folder I've just created inside RetroArch. So let's just go into the PCSX2 folder inside RetroWatch. I've just copied everything into. And if I just go into the BIOS folder here, what I'm going to do now is just copy all of my BIOS files inside of this folder. So if I highlight all my PS2 BIOS files, I'm going to just drag and drop them inside of this folder like this. So once you've done this, what we're going to do next is actually open up RetroArch and download a core for this. So I'm going to go to Online Updater. I'm going to go to Core Downloader. And we're looking for a PS2 core, obviously. So if I just go all the way down until I find Sony PS2. And the one we're going to download is the Sony PlayStation 2 LRPS2. So let's just download this core. So I'm going to back out of this once I've downloaded and that core is installed. I'm going to update a few things. So if I go to online updater here, what I'm going to do is just now update core info files just to get the latest files we need for this. And I'm also going to update assets. So once everything is finally extracted, we're almost good to go with this. And after we've updated the assets, we're now going to update databases and wait for this one to extract. So that's it. All we're gonna do now is look for a game to play. So my game is on my desktop. So to do this, I'm gonna head over to this plus symbol and I'm gonna add my game. So I'm gonna to go to manual scan, content directory, C drive. And from C drive, my game is located on my desktop. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to users. And then I'm gonna to go to Jamie. From Jamie, I'm gonna to go to desktop. And my game is located in my PS2 games folder. So scan this directory. And then if we go to start scan, scan complete. So we're going to come back out here. And the game I have just added is Alien Hominid. 
And here we go. So this is now located under my PS2 section. So if I now go into Alien Hominid, I'm going to go to Run, Sony PlayStation 2, LRPS2. And Run. And there we go. We're now inside of our PlayStation 2 game user RetroArch. And of course, as always, my trusty PS3 controller works fine with this, and this is wild. So I'm going to go back to core options, video, and I'm going to put this one to 1080p and test 1080p out for this game. So as we can see, 1080p with Alien Hominid on PS2 works just fine. We can do more tweaking here. If we go to core options again, video, we can make this into the aspect ratio of 16 by 9. So widescreen 16 by 9, but we also need to enable widescreen patches for this to work. So let's back out of here. And what I'm going to do is now go to configuration file, save current configuration, restart RetroArch, and I'm going to boot this game back up again. So this time round, we should now be getting widescreen 16 by 9 in 1080p. And there we have it. So let's go back to core options again, and I'm going to take you through some more settings to clean things up. So if we go back to video, we can change some options here. So we can go to FX double A. If we enable this and go back into the gameplay, things are going to look a little bit smoother. Core options, video, anastrophic filtering. Again, the higher up you go with this, the more pressure it's going to put onto your hardware. So I'm going to go to eight times for this. Go back into the gameplay. So what that anti-aliasing option has just done is cleaned up the jagged edges, as you see. If we go back to video and texture filtering, if I take this to bilinear, this will make a slight blur on our game. So let's go back into this game. And as you can see, the pixelation is a little less and things are looking a little bit more blurred and it looks pretty good. And of course, once you've got your game looking how you want it to look, always, always, always go to configuration file and save current configuration. So I'm going to quit out of this. So that's it for my PS2 or RetroArch setup guide. Like I said at the beginning of my video, hit notifications. You don't want to miss out on upcoming content for emulation and retro content I've got coming. Also, be sure to follow me on social media for updates. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. But until next time, stay retro.